Oh, wow. Well, hi everyone and welcome to Pal to Tech. Today we have a very special review. The Viltrox 75mm f1.2 lens for Fujifilm's X-Mount. I have used and reviewed every single Viltrox lens ever made for Fujifilm. And before I go any further, this is not only their greatest mm -hmm. lens, but the greatest third-party lens I've used yet on Fujifilm. Before I get into the review though, we need to get a disclaimer out of the way. Viltrox did send me this lens to review for the channel. However, they they did not sponsor nor pay for this review. They have had no involvement in the creation of this video, and they were not allowed to see this video until right now when it's gone live for all of you. There is something though that I feel I need to disclose. A few weeks ago, Viltrox sent me this box which contained a New Year's gift. I didn't ask them for it, they just sent it. It was a thoughtful gift, and I'm sure they sent this out to some of their favorite YouTube channels and creators. And honestly, I was really touched by it. It's a cool little camera display, and it looks like, you know, kind of like a subscriber award. It also came included with this little scrolling device that showcases Viltrox's lenses and embraces the year of the rabbit. As soon as I opened up the box, I knew it had to go right in the background here in the redesigned studio. To be clear, this gift was not sent with this lens. I received this lens separately many weeks before Viltrox sent this other gift. It wasn't like, you know, I received them at the same time. You know, here, pal to tech, here's a lens for you to review. Oh, Oh, and by the way, look, it wasn't like that at all. However, this gift was given to me though by the same company of which I'm doing a review to tell you whether or not you should buy one of their products. And so I felt the right thing to do is to provide this full disclosure to you so that you can make up your own mind as to the legitimacy of today's review. I'm not returning this gift. It looks too good there. <laughs> and frankly, I think it would be an insult to them. However, I do feel that it required me to make this disclaimer first. And some of you may consider this a conflict of interest because I decided to keep the gift. And maybe it is. I don't know. What I do know for certain is that I take my reviews on this channel very, very seriously, even when I'm having fun and goofing around. And about all I can say is that I promise that I will give you my honest opinion about this lens. Okay, let's get on with the review. This new 75 millimeter lens sits right between the 56 millimeter and the 85 millimeter lenses from Viltrox. It currently retails for $549, which definitely puts it on the higher end of Viltrox's lens lineup. However, from the moment I took it out of the box, I was extremely impressed by the build quality. It's all black, made of aluminum alloy, and it's very well constructed. It is gorgeous, in fact, and it feels really solid. Now, right front and center, there's the word PRO stamped right on it, just above a switch to go from manual to autofocus mode. There is no doubt what market Viltrox is catering this lens toward. Professional all the way. The lens weighs in at 670 grams, and funny thing, it's almost as big as, and it's actually heavier than, the 16 to 55 millimeter zoom lens. It has a focal length of 75 millimeters, which is 112.5 millimeters full frame equivalent. The aperture ring is clickable, but it's not loud. It has more of a tactile feel to it. Here's what it sounds like. The aperture range is f1.2 to f16 and contains 11 diaphragm blades. There are 16 elements in 11 groups. Included in the box, you also get a lens cap, a fairly solid plastic lens hood, and this lens carrying bag right here. On the front, the lens takes a 77 millimeter screw thread. And this is nice because if you happen to have the 16 to 55 millimeter zoom, then this new Viltrox lens can use, you know, any of the existing filters that you may already have. The bottom of the lens contains electrical contact points which are responsible for sending EXIF data from the lens to the camera and, of course, controlling the autofocus. There is also a USB-C port built right into the lens so that you can use that to update the firmware. For most of my review testing for this lens, I use the new Fujifilm X-T5 camera which, of course, contains the larger 40 megapixel sensor size. I wanted to see how this lens would perform with a higher resolution sensor. 
and it did not disappoint. Let's take a look now at the image quality. Regarding image quality, I will say right off the bat that this lens is extremely sharp with superb image quality, even right down to f1.2. The background isolation that you can get is incredible considering the price of this lens and the fact that it is a third party lens for Fujifilm on a 40 megapixel sensor. This allows us of course to zoom pretty far in and still retain some really nice detail. Here I am zoomed in at two 200%. My favorite film sim to use with this lens was Nostalgic Negative. Have a look at these colors. They are just gorgeous. And again, zooming in at 200% here. Look at that detail. Here we are zoomed back out. I was so impressed with the sharpness and level of detail that I was able to get with this lens. It was way more than I thought. Let me show you what I mean about this lens and the larger sensor. Okay, so here's the full frame size right here. You see that? Now, if I zoom into 100%, everything is sharp, just beautiful. And this is pretty much kind of in the center of the lens. And if I jump in at 300%, check it out. You definitely get all kinds of detail. Here's 400%. And again, back to the actual frame. Let's dig in a little bit deeper to the optical quality. Okay, here we are at f1.2. Zoomed into the center at f1.2, it is nice and sharp. Look at the corner right here, nice and sharp as well. Now the one thing there is, is some vignetting where it's darker around the corners, check it out. Here it is at f1.2, f4. F1.2, F4. And actually the vignetting gets a lot better when you go to F2. You see that? F1.2, F2. 1.2, F2. As you stop down the lens, the vignetting goes away completely and it continues to get overall sharper until you get to about F11. Here's F1.2 versus F11 right in the center. You see that? Pretty good still. And even in the corners, it's pretty good. Here we are zoomed in at 200%. F1.2 versus F16. Right in the center, have a look at that. Pretty similar. Now in the corners, it's obviously darker when you have it at f1.2, due to the vignetting, of course. But what I find so interesting about this lens is that the center area stays pretty much the same with regard to sharpness all the way through the focal ranges. And I notice that whether you're in the center or at the corners. But the reason to get this lens and the area where it truly shines, and that is the background and the bokeh. Here we are at f16, and obviously you can see the background due to the stop down lens, and you get a little bit of starburst going on. You see that right there? Well, watch what happens when I switch this to f2.8. Check it out. Or f1.2. So you can have a background that looks like this and change it to this and really bring out your subject. And you don't always have to go to f1.2 to do that. You can do it at f2. It looks great. Here we are at 100%. Look at that background. Check it out. Here we are at 200%. And again, you've got nice sharpness and clarity in the center. Here we are again at f1.2. And I must say the X-T5 did a pretty nice job on animal recognition. More to come when I do my review of this camera. And of course, with that wide open of an aperture, if you focus in on the dog's eye, <laughs> right, the nose will be out of focus and so forth. I'd probably recommend F2 and smaller if you're photographing animals. And you sometimes do have to be a little careful because of that F1.2 because you can almost get that toy camera look. You see right here, completely blurry here, blurry here, and then what you want is right in focus. Look at that, zoomed in at 200%. Again, the image quality that I was noticing when I brought all these into Capture One was much better than I thought I was going to get. Overall, I found autofocus to be very good and the best I've actually seen yet from a Viltrox lens for Fujifilm. It's not perfect, but it's the best I've seen them produce to date. I paired it with the X-T5 and I tested it in a variety of situations, both in video and photography. For photography, I noticed that I had more keeper shots with this lens in burst mode than I was able to get using the 85 millimeter lens from Viltrox. There were some misses along the way, but enough hits so that I was still left impressed with its autofocus performance. I had the X-T5 set to continuous burst mode low and I used zone autofocus with the lens. That being said, I didn't find its video performance to be that great. Look at how the focus sort of just pulses and jumps when you're shooting video with this lens. It's like it focuses and then it kind of jumps back a little bit. 
But keep in mind that many people who do shoot video do so in manual focus mode. The lens does have a very nice focus ring, nice and large, good ergonomics, easy to grab onto, right? But the lens does use focus by wire though. And video shooters, you are gonna wanna take note that there is some focus breathing apparent on this lens as well. I still think you could make this lens worth using for video as long as you're careful with your autofocus situations and you know up front what this lens can handle. Face, eye, auto detect did come through as you can see here and as long as your subject and your background have some contrast to each other it should do fairly well with face eye auto detect on the X-T5. I found the lens's handling of any chromatic aberration to be absolutely wonderful. It had very little to almost none in my testing. Lens flaring though, yeah, there is a bit of lens flaring, no question about it, and it's just something to be aware of. Now, one thing I do wanna mention, and that is the minimum focus distance. On this lens, the minimum focus distance is advertised to be 34.6 inches or 88 centimeters. This is about what I measured in my testing, but I did find that to be a bit further than I would have liked. It's not a deal breaker for me, and that's only for the reason that I was shooting on an X-T5 with a 40 megapixel sensor, meaning that, you know, I could zoom and crop in and it wasn't such a big deal. However, if you are shooting, say, on an X-T3 with a 26 megapixel sensor, you might want to keep that minimum focus distance in mind. One of the lenses that I wanted to compare it to is the 90 millimeter Fujinon Prime. <laughs> and there's no question about it. The 90 millimeter Fujinon lens has a very fast autofocus motor system that blows away the Viltrux or any other Fujinon lens for that matter. However, this 90 millimeter lens is $949. And frankly, unless you're shooting sports or some serious action shots, I was hard pressed to come up with a reason why you wouldn't go with the Viltrox 75 millimeter and save yourself quite a bit of money. It's almost a $400 savings between the Viltrox 75 and the Fuji 90. And if you're shooting portrait photography, I think you're gonna be very pleased with the 75 millimeter focal length. But then this begs another question. What about the Viltrox 80? millimeter lens. The 85 millimeter is priced at $400, which is $150 cheaper than the 75 millimeter. Having used and tested both, I can say that it is worth it to pay the extra $150 and get the Viltrox 75 millimeter. I think you're going to find that the focal length is a bit more flexible, and if you're pairing it with the X-T5, right, with the 40 megapixel sensor, you're going to have more room to crop in to make Make up for that focal length if you need to. Also, for me, $150 is worth having the aperture ring right on the lens, especially this one, because this is an awesome aperture ring with wonderful feel to it, and the aperture ring that Viltrox put on this lens is outstanding. The evolution that Viltrox has gone through from their very first 85 millimeter lens to the new 75 millimeter lens is pretty incredible. Their attention to build quality, optics, autofocus, and overall handling have gotten much better over time. As I said in the beginning of this video, this is Viltrox's best lens, and I think it's even better than their 13 millimeter lens. Now, don't get me wrong, the 13 millimeter is awesome. It's a close second, but the incredible background you can get from this 75 pushes it right to the top of the list at first place for me, particularly at the price point that they are selling this lens for. This is an ideal lens for portrait photography, anything with people, some nature, and a number of non-fast action sporting and other events. As I've said many times, I'm thrilled to see third-party companies supporting Fujifilm's X-mount system, and there's no doubt about it. With this 75 millimeter entry, Viltrox has raised that bar even higher, not only for Fujifilm, but for all third-party lens manufacturers. They knocked it out of the park on this one. Well done, folks. Well, that about wraps it up for this week. I had hoped to get to a full-blown studio tour video for you, that is going to have to come next week, and I am working on it right now, along with a host of other videos. I am going to start to pick up steam on this channel with the idea of at least two, if not three videos every single week. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching, and I really hope you found the video helpful or 
at least entertaining. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I will see you over the blah, blah, blah. I forgot my lines. Mm -hmm.